Hey there, thanks for tuning into Duckbricks. I'm Chris, and welcome to a brand new episode of Bionicle Fan and Reviews, the show where I review fan created, canonized, or non canonized Bionicle models and contest winners, which is going to be the topic of today's video. Now, previously, we hosted here on Duckbricks the Dinosaurs of Bota Magna fan and contest. I can't wait to get into this because there were so many incredible, unique custom Lego creations. And so, without further ado, let's jump right in to the review. Okay, so this right here is the Tremgon made by Jopy Tropy. This won second place in our small category of the Lego Bionicle Dinosaurs of Bota Magna Fanon Contest, which absolutely is fitting because this is honestly just a really simple, cute, small little Triceratops model. I really like how this started off as a digital build but actually does integrate a lot of pieces quite well such that when building it physically, it was a total breeze, there were no problems really in putting this together. Now, this is a pretty interesting one because while it does tend to use mostly just simple building techniques for say the legs and whatnot, I do actually really like how it all comes together, it has quite a charm to it that makes it kind of feel like it would have been like an actual Bionicle set or maybe like a Rahi build that they would do back in the day, especially with the older pieces used and the head building itself is quite nice as well. Now, this is pretty much the exact same build based on the digital image. There are a couple swaps in terms of colors just because of what I had on hand, but for the most part, this is representative of the actual entry itself. Now, getting it off the turntable here, I want to start off with just the articulation. This should be a fairly quick review because this is a fairly small model. Articulation-wise, this is an interesting one because for whatever reason, the pins on the actual way that the legs are mounted are movable. So these can be moved, this can be moved, and these back legs really just kind of move around, which isn't necessarily a good thing, but it's also not necessarily a bad thing. Personally, I would have much preferred if they just kept the socket fixed and allowed you to be able to just move the leg based on the socket, but then I realized that your articulation is somewhat limited because of the Nuva point here, or the Nuva shoulder armor here, so I guess it makes sense to be able to actually move the entire leg. The instructions call for you to use these incredibly rare black pin to axle converters. They actually require you to use it a ton throughout this build. I think it asks you to use like six or something like that. I only use it on the parts where they would actually be visible, but unfortunately because those pieces are pretty old, they don't have as much clutch power as the standard blue ones do, which makes it such that when you're trying to pose this, it's very easy for the back legs to kind of fall backwards like that. But as long as you're careful with it, it's not too bad. Now, the tail itself can also be moved up and down and kind of back to forth on a ball joint here. This right here can be moved up and down on the friction joint, and unfortunately, this whole armor piece is not actually attached on by more than one pin, so it's very easy to just move back and forth and flop around, which exposes the interior of the build itself. But as long as you're, again, careful with it, keep it steady on one particular direction, then it's not going to go anywhere. Moving onwards for the upper legs, these are thankfully fixed, which is nice. I don't really know what the point was in including the gears here. I guess it just adds a little bit of extra detail, but this gear is also using one of those black pin to axle converters, which definitely makes sense because you don't want a random blue piece there, but it does feel like a waste of a very rare piece. Now there is no gear function, which is unfortunate. When I first built it, I thought at first there was going to be a gear function, which is pretty exciting because I was like, oh, you've got the gears in, so maybe you've got the function where you can move the legs. That is not the case. The gears are just fixed, so again, not really sure why that's there. I can think of a few ways where they could have easily done a gear function, just simply not attach the headpiece via the same axle, attach it via a different connection in the inside of the torso piece, then you could have easily integrated the gear functionality of the Mata gearbox, but maybe it was decided that that would add a little bit too much movement into the way that it comes together, so the builder just decided to kind of leave it as is, which I understand as well. The head itself can be articulated on a couple different points here. It is just on a longer CCBS ball joint, so you can move it all in every which way direction that you want, which is nice to do. That is pretty much all the articulation you would want to have for something like this, so I do appreciate the way that that all came together. And even the eyes, one thing I like, I don't know if this was intentional or not, but one thing you can do with it 
is that you can kind of pivot the eyes back and forth. It can look back and forth for the eyeballs, which I just think is a nice little detail that we have it looking behind it. So it's watching out for some predators that are sneaking up on it or some of the Agori or Kotorian, or you can just have it looking straight. But then again, you can see as I'm moving it around, it does have the issue of the back legs just kind of falling backwards because they're only attached by one single pin. Still, I think we've about summed up posability. Now we can move on to building techniques. Building techniques, obviously this was for the small category, so it is pretty simplified and the building techniques are a little bit mixed. You've got just a very standard assembly for the black throwbot or roborider type torso elements on the back of the model itself. You just have a single pin attaching the armor plate, you have a large use of the Mata torso, but I do like how it is simple but definitely feels like a Bionicle build in its simplicity. One thing I actually do really appreciate is that most of these silver bits, like these ones right here, are mostly rounded for the legs, and the black bits are all very detailed with pistons and the G1 aesthetic, making it seem like the organic silver parts are actually kind of more curved armor parts fit onto the body itself, and the internal structure has the pistons and the mechanical details, and those are all the black colored elements, so it really has a pretty cohesive color scheme where that's concerned. All in all, the building techniques are very, very simple. There's nothing crazy going on, but they're not bad either. They're just honestly pretty average. And I do really like the way that the head is done. That really does stand out to me in giving us a very expressive face for the creature. I really like the way that the builder utilized this particular armor piece where it looks like these are eyebrows almost and looks like it was made for an eye socket, which is obviously not what the piece was intended for, but I think that looks really great. And of course, having this Triceratops-like build is very, very cool as well. Moving on from the building techniques, in terms of overall aesthetics, I am pretty pleased. Posability aside, this is just a really solid little little Triceratops type thing. I guess next to a standard uh, buildable character like a Toa or Glatorian, it could look like a baby Triceratops almost, or maybe you could just see a herd of these mid-sized Triceratops stampeding across Bota Magna. The aesthetics are on point, and I think that's definitely what propelled this to being one of the second place winners was because it just looks so good aesthetically speaking. You can clearly see what it's supposed to be, a large Triceratops, it's got kind of the frills on the back there, and it absolutely conveys exactly what you want out of a set like this really well. But so I think I want to bring alongside some representative samples to use for our final point here. We have Ranu the Agori, which we can put him right next to him, so they're about the same size actually. And then we have the Glatorian Akar who does stand above this creature here, but this definitely looks like a good size, I don't know, like a pet for them or something like that. I think they definitely look really good together, especially having these different characters who do feel like they're from the same universe existing in the same space where you can see that they're kind of scaled quite nicely next to it. Setting aside Akar because I think he's a little bit too big to ride it, one of the things I want to do with all the dino reviews is to actually let the characters ride them. So we have Ranu here, let's see, can we get him into a good, good sort of riding pose? I think we can do that. Okay, so he's got his, his hand here. Looking forward, that's pretty good, that's that's not bad. He does feel a little oversized to be riding this. I feel kind of bad for the Tremgon. It's kind of like a, it's like you're sitting on a dog or something. It's maybe a little too small to be ridden, but I, can, I think it doesn't look bad. You can maybe imagine that if it was a little larger, it could be ridden. Maybe this is like a baby form of it. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the believability in universe. Sure, it does use a lot of Ben 10 and CCBS pieces, but it uses them to good effect. These are very clearly hooves and do really look like kind of animalistic feet, so I do like that look and feel for the creature itself. Shame that only one of these in silver came in every single Onua Masters G2 set, so these are not that cheap on Brickling to get four of these. But overall, I think the believability in universe is probably going to get a 9 out of 10 for me. Not really anything that stands out being bad about it. I think it's quite good in the way that it's put together. So 9 out of 10 for that. In terms of the rest of the points, so starting off with posability. Now posability is a little bit of a tough one because while it is pretty posable, it's almost too posable. Where that the back legs often just don't support the weight so it tends to kind of fall over like that. It's kind of cute though, it's like he's kind of laying down, but it's obviously not the intent, you do want him to be standing up and easily standing up, so I definitely feel like it was a bit of a con just having the back legs be mounted on single Technic pins. That being said, the rest of the articulation is not bad. I do appreciate how much you can actually articulate this back and forth, especially with the head and the tail. This being way too movable is a bit of a con to me, I don't think this should be swiveling. So I guess overall for posability, I'm going to go ahead and give it a 7.5 out of 10. It's very posable, and it doesn't really have any risk of falling over, it's just when you're posing it, it's very easy 
for one of those legs or both of them to get kicked out on the back there. In terms of building techniques, I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10, just because it's just super simple. It is really just a very small build, and simple is not bad. Simple is absolutely not bad. A lot of great Bionicle sets were very, very simple, so that means that aesthetically speaking, I'm definitely going to give it a 9 out of 10. I love the way this looks overall, and of course the believability in universe also got a high score because this feels like an actual Bionicle model you would build, maybe save for the legs just not really supporting their own weight. Overall though, this is a really nice and charming addition to the Bota Magna Dinosaur Fan Contest. Thank you for everybody who entered, it has been a very good competition and I'm really enjoying building all of these and reviewing them. Love dinosaurs, love Bionicle, Bionicle Dinosaurs was the next best thing to have to combine two great things and this is a really nice result of what was a fantastic contest. But that about sums up our review of the Tremgon, thank you so much for tuning into Duck Bricks, be sure to like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon. Bye for now.